So I have a basic uh, fragment shader up and running. If you don't know how to do that, I'll have a link in the description below. Or if you're watching on YouTube, a card should be popping up on the top right now. But just to go over it very quickly, line two, what we're doing is we're establishing a default precision level for our floating point numbers. What does that mean? Basically, the number of decimal places the program is going to accept. The higher the number of decimal places, the greater the accuracy. The greater the accuracy, the greater the accuracy of your, your colors, your, your shapes, your geometry, your movement on screen. Next up, we have a U resolution uniform, which is a constant that's sent to us by the vertex shader. That's just the resolution of this canvas right here. Next, we have the main function. GLSL is a C-based language or C mimicking language. So it looks like C. So the main function is returning nothing. And then all of this code here renders this bad boy on the right here. And so next up is the ST. ST is the coordinate of the, the, uh, the current pixel running this shader. We're taking frag chord, which is the coordinate of that pixel on our monitor's resolution on the screen. And then we're dividing it by the canvas's resolution in order to normalize that pixel into the canvas. So we're transporting that pixel into the canvas, translating it into the canvases pixel coordinate system. And so ST is how we know which one of these guys, these dots, these squares within this canvas is currently running this code. Next up, I have three default colors, canvas, color red, color blue. Canvas is black, but you can't see it obviously because the red and blue are overlapping it. And then I have red and blue. I could have easily written those red and blue colors inside the mix, which we will get to in a second, I promise. It just looks crummy, looks uh, convoluted, messy. So I just extrapolated them to be explicit about what we're doing with our code. So color red like that. The next two lines, 14 and 15, linear modifier and weight. This line right here, line 15 is completely redundant. But again, just to be explicit about what we're doing, I named a new variable called weight because the weight weights these two colors. Could be easily just put linear modifier in like that. So what is the linear modifier? Well, from your high school algebra, you learned f of x is equal to y. Now, what's y? y is the output of your function, or you could say the shape of your function. So that's why it's called linear modifier. This is the function we're using to weight the two colors. A linear function, a line, why is it called a linear function? Because the, the slope is constant. The ratio between the rise and the run is constant. And so I just named it linear modifier. You could have easily named it y or I don't know, a function output. But because we're modifying the colors, the weights with a linear modifier, I called mine linear modifier. So let's move on to mix. What is mix? Three different arguments for mix. The first argument is the zero value, the false value. You could say the leftmost value or the starting value. The right or the, excuse me, the second argument is the one or the true or the rightmost or the ending finishing value. And then the third argument is the weight. The weight tells mix how to move from your start to your end, from your zero to your one, from your false to your true, from left to right, from your color red to your color blue. This is how we're getting this effect on the right side here. When we're moving from constant zero on the left, constant one on the right, and in between, what's, what's in between zero and one? 0 0.5, so we get the even mix of red and blue, or even mix of zero and one, which is 0 0.5, which is purple. So that's all weight or mix does. It takes two values and the weight tells mix how to move from this value to this value. And this value here, this argument is always a zero argument or zero value. This argument right here is always a one value. If the weight was, let's say, two billion, whatever, two billion, that doesn't register with mix. Mix only knows from zero to one. So two billion would be treated as one. So you get full blue. Let me just show you. So weight would be, let's say, again, it goes from zero to one. Let me just give it, I don't know, nine, 900, 900 like that. We get full blue. Again, it doesn't recognize any number above one or any number below zero. Let's say 0 0.5, full red, 0 0.999.00, full red. So only from, that's even mix, 0 0.5, that's where we get the purple, only from, uh, from zero to one. Now the next two examples are just reinforcing what I just told you. I've just animated the, uh, the canvas in two different ways. So let's move on to example two. So all I've done is I've turned the function on and off. 
when the function is off, we get a full red because the function is at a zero. A function, or our function, instead of being uh, one to one with the x, it's just a zero. So you notice the red line is on a zero. So we have a constant zero, which is a constant false, which is a constant start, which is a constant left value, which is a constant red. So that's why we get the constant red. Now when the function turns on, we go back to this slant right here. The thing about a linear function is the slope is always constant. So we get this zero to one, this red to blue and the purple in between. But if we get the full red when the, when the line's laying on the horizontal, how do we get full blue? Like if this is zero and this is, well, what is this? This is one. I thought one was associated with blue. What's going on? Again, this is zero, this is one. This is, let me just not erase the X. So let me increase this size, perfect. So that's zero, constant flat line, so constant, constant uh, red, and that's one. But if this is one, and that's one, why are we getting a constant blue on the canvas? Well, we have to influence the steepness of the, uh, of the, of the line. We can never really influence the fact that the, the slope is constant. That that's what makes it a linear function. But we can influence the steepness of the line. And when we influence the steepness of the line, what we're saying to the mix function is, we want you to increase or decrease how quickly you get to one. So once we increase the steepness like this, you'll see that the line goes towards one, it gets to one a lot quicker. Over here, when it was just a one-to-one -one function, it reached one when x was one. Now that we have maybe, let's say, 10, it reaches one when x is like, I don't know, what is this number here? x is 0 0.052. So on the back end, in order to get this to full blue, we influence the steepness of the line. That's what example three does. So we still get the full red on the bottom, zero right there. We still get the 0 0.5 in the middle. You can't really see it because it goes by so quick, but that's going to be the purple right there. And then as we increase the steepness of the line, we get closer and closer to one sooner rather than later. So we get this, we get more blue, this encroachment of blue on the whole canvas. And so just to leave you with this, let's change the weight. So our weight is animating, but it's animating a linear uh, modifier. What if we wanted to, and I use this site all the time to do OpenGL stuff. It's an online graphing calculator called Desmos. Uh, so I can visualize what we're going to do or what I'm going to do with the code. What if we wanted our, our weight to look, I don't know, maybe something like this too. Let's do this. And so, oh, I forgot to, for people who don't know, our canvas on the bottom left is zero, zero. The bottom right is uh, zero, one. The top left is zero, excuse me, the bottom right is one, zero. The top left is zero, one. And the top right is one, one. That's the coordinate system, the X and Y axes of our canvas. And so when I code with these things, you have to be careful of your dimensions, your range. All we have to do is look at the zero to one range, this square right here. And so now we have a quadratic function, a parabola or quadratic. What is our color gonna do? How is this function, this quadratic function, telling mix to mix the colors? Well, it's saying start out red and then mix a bit of blue, but it's so minuscule that it may as well be red. So basically flat here. So red, 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 more blue, more blue, more blue, red, 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 more blue, more blue, and then shoot up. And we're going to should have like a lot of blue on the right side. So what we should have when I go back and edit the code, we should have red here. And then as we reach like 0 0.5 right here, we'll get blue. So this should be our purple right here on the, you could say, I don't know, maybe a third, two thirds into the canvas from the left. Let's go to the back and find out. Let's go to the first example and we'll modify our our function, our weight. So it's not a linear modifier right now, it's a quadratic modifier. And I'll change this to quadratic modifier. And look at that. We get, oh, not yet. That looked off. I was like, that's not a quadratic modifier at all. There, pow. Raise that to the power of two. There we go. That looks what it's supposed to look like. So we have the, uh, the starting off with red, and because that's flat, over here, and we reach about 0 0.5 here, two thirds of the canvas, we reach the purple, and then we shoot up exponentially right here, and we get the blue. So you can weight these colors, you can weight 
again, these don't have to be colors, but this video is about color. You can weight these values, these colors with whatever function you want. You get crazy, like, I don't know, maybe a sine function. So what if we did something like uh, sine of x? We'd get, well, we'd start, we get almost like a linear function. We'd get this red, 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 and we'd never really reach blue right here. Let's see what we get. That looks interesting. I won't rename these guys just for the sake of speed. Let's see what we get. Sine of x. Am I not writing sine of x properly? Undeclared. What are we getting? On line 14, sin of x. Sine. Oh, excuse me, st dot x. So we get something that kind of looks like a linear modifier, and that's because this line right here, again, just between 0 and 1, it looks like a line. What if we sped that guy up, though? What if we said 6.0? No, it's not going to speed it up. That's the amplitude. Let's go 6.0 here. Mm, that looks interesting. Uh, let's go 10.0. And then let's do... Let's shrink down the uh, the amplitude by half. And then let's raise the, uh, the whole graph by 0 0.5. All right, that looks interesting. So we're going to take this function here. We're going to use that to modify our mix, telling uh, our mix this is how we want the 0 to 1 or the false to true to be mixed. Let me copy that. Let me paste it here so I can see what we're working with. So what we're saying is 0 0.5 times the sine and your x value is modified by a 10. Amplitude 10, and then we're adding 0 0.5 to the whole thing. 0 0.5 like that. And look at that. So we've weighted the colors differently now. It goes from 0 all the way up to 1 very quickly, which is right here. And it goes back down to 0. Adds just shy of half the canvas should be full red, which is right here. Perfect. It goes from 0 and it should go to 1 again. Once more blue. And right at the end of our, of our range, it should never reach full red. So it looks like full red, but the sky's not full red. So again, just uh, messing around. This is how we weight or we use mix to uh, mix uh, different colors. If this helps you at all, don't forget to give a like, comments down below, um, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I think the next video is gonna be, we're gonna use the step function and the this mix function to just make some patterns on screen. So look out for that video. I'll see you guys in the next one.